Grow Cookies is proudly sponsored by Board Bia and StopFoodWaste.ie. It's early June and our beetroot are doing great. They don't need much TLC and in a matter of weeks these guys will be ready to harvest. But first, to my beets and containers. I may have hit a bit of a stumbling block. One of the really important things about growing is that it's okay to ask for help. I'm just putting it in context. Michael Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> help. Actually, you know what? These are not bad at all. Like, and I don't want to. Does that sound are really? Are you being really patronising right now? That sound really condescending. <laughs> But actually, no, seriously, these are not bad at all. So these leaves are, some of them are a little bit tired looking, I would imagine, because there's just not as, mu as much food in this for the plants. Yeah, so we've exhausted all the nutrients yeah. from the soil. But they're not okay. doing bad at all. And actually, they're not far off being kind of ready to be eaten as baby beets at this stage. Okay, so should I give them a little feed to boost them for the next couple of weeks before we harvest? Or? I, don't, I don't think, that at this stage, I think they're kind of, you know, they're only a couple of weeks off being ready. So I would say probably Should no, I kick off no the need. yellowing? Nothing, leave them be. I think leave them be. And eat, to be, be honest, you could still, you know, eat some of these in salads, the smaller leaves and stuff like that. You know, you've got a nice, nice return of, of beets from a very small yep. container and I, I think that's pretty good. Okay, there you go. Thanks. Payment. Thank you. Cheers, dude. Right, now it's time for something completely different. I said earlier I'd be taking on a planting challenge. So Mick, get your wellies on and I'll see you at the end of the garden. Are you wondering why we're down this neck of the woods at Grow HQ? I'm guessing if you're leading this, it's container growing. Yes, and as much as I love to be the champion of container growing, I'm not surprised you would think that. But actually, no. Oh. I have a surprise. A we're fresh going to new go thing. a fresh new direction. All right. Today, Michael Kelly, we are going to be talking about and planting an orchard in an hour. I don't think we're going to do it in an hour. It's okay. the first thing. And the second thing is I have to own up to my kind of, you know, this is a big moment for me, so let me do this properly. Okay. That I'm not a fruit expert. Okay. But I have a guy who is. So we have got our all round genius in all things horticulture here in Grow HQ, Richard Me. I'm going to leave you in Richard's really capable hands. I'm going to start the stopwatch. I don't believe you can do it. We're on the clock, but I know we can do it. First thing is to sort out the tree placement. Richard has instructed me to lay them out three to four meters apart. They're all in place. Why exactly are they laid out like such? Well, uh, the spacing is related to the rootstock. OK, what do you mean by rootstock? Right, well, have a look here. Uh, you can see there's a knobbly bit in all the trees just here. Yeah. OK, that's where the rootstock is joined to the... There's two trees in one. OK. That is the fruiting variety attached to a rootstock. The rootstock is what gives you the size of the tree. Uh, the tree will grow about three four metres high, so the space in between the trees needs to be about the same. So you need at least two trees yeah. to pollinate. They can't be the same. They have to have a nice match mm. and get on well with each yes. other. If I was just putting two apple trees in a garden, which you need two because they have to pollinate yeah. each other, I'd choose Katie, Katia and James Grieve because they pollinate each other well. They're both very sturdy in terms of looking after themselves with pests and diseases and they produce an apple which is quite tasty. Tick tock, tick tock, Richard. We're 10 minutes in, but let's not hang around and get these apple trees into the ground. You really want to make sure is that ideally this doesn't collapse okay. and all the soil compost fall off the, the roots okay. there. So we want to put it in. But you, um, now that looks to me about the right height. Put a little bit of soil on top, but not too much because we don't want to come anywhere near the graft. No, okay. okay? Make sure the stake can go in comfortably. Now you need to get it as close to the tree as you can. Uh, but you don't want to go through the roots, so we'll angle it a little bit. What is handy is a little bit of fertiliser. I'm using yeah. the chicken manure pellets as a balanced fertiliser. Okay. So uh, you want trees and bushes uh, get most of their nutrients from the soil surface. Uh, so scatter, mixing it in with the soil there. Here, this pile here. Uh, just scatter it around there. There we go. I don't know, two or three handfuls, not very scientific, but that'll do yeah, them. Brilliant. And then we can shovel the soil over the top, feed it round your tree like that. Okay. Use your boot, not too deep, not too shallow. 20 minutes in and just one tree in the ground. Let's tie this one up. Come on, Richard, let's get things moving. Are you also suggesting that, like, that you use something with a bit of give in it so that if, yes, if it's, it's elasticated it's going to go uh, with a vigorous root stuck you only need to stake it to stop the root rocking rocking uh, you don't mind if the the top rocks around in a gale 
and you'd only leave it on for two winters. So you pull that through like that. Okay. Tie that like that. So a little, a little nail in there. You can bend it over at that. All you're doing is stopping it slipping up and down. Orchard in an hour, no problem. Just remember, space, plant, feed, tie, repeat. I never doubted it for a 40 minute, yes. minutes, 16 seconds. I cannot wait to tell as him. As long as he's on the way with the coffee. <laughs> as long as he is on the way. I'm here. Hurrah, Michael Kelly. I can't believe it. Thank I you. am actually eating my hat. If I had a hat to eat, I would coffee eat Coffee and, oh, did you bring I any humble like pie? I did. <laughs> That's just for you, dude. <laughs> yeah. This okay. is absolutely amazing. Yeah, well check done. it out. So I have to say, it was in lots of ways easier than I thought. Yeah. And yet it did require, you know, a little bit of exertion. Clearly, ladies never sweat, so I'm just gently glowing. Yeah. So I saw Richard put himself in harm's, harm's way there as well with you with the sledgehammer. That's uh, <laughs> well, you know, we like to live. Man. We like to live life on the veg. So uh, yes, yeah. There we go. Bad jokes aside, it's 16 weeks since our beetroot bonanza began, and it's finally time to reap what we've sowed. It's harvest day. I honestly can't believe how easy growing beetroot has been. In a matter of just a few months, we started out with tiny, tiny seeds in the modular trays. Yeah. It was about six weeks later, we transplanted them into the raised bed. Hardly any maintenance. The foliage themselves kept it all weed free. And here we are. Every single one we sowed germinated. Every one we, we transplanted out and put in here has, has grown. Yep. So absolutely. And I, that's the way I think about beetroot. It's a really reliable one to grow. Cool. One very important thing when you're, har when you're harvesting them, right? You, you actually uh, twist off the leaves like this. So you just kind of twist them like that. And that means if you, when you chop beetroot, the leaves, if you actually cut it with a knife, they bleed. So you're better off to kind of twist it off okay. like that and then you can kind of harvest it like this. Some of these leaves would be pretty good in, <laughs> in salads. I think maybe not Yeah, not that one. Okay. But a leaf like that, the bigger ones wouldn't be so good to eat. Would they be really bitter? They'd be very bitter. Okay. You, could, you could use them in stir fries and things like that. Uh, but these ones, perfect in a salad, really, really tasty. And don't forget with beetroot, these stalks are also edible, fantastic to eat, chopped up, either sauteed or thrown into a stir fry as nice. well. Nice. OK, Sounds let's good. go. OK, so I'm going to have a little look on both rows, yeah? Yeah, both rows, exactly. Oh, look, these one, this one's even bigger, so... Yeah, well, definitely oh, time to get that out of there. And look at these amazing colours. And look at my amazing container beets. But as usual, Mick doesn't seem too impressed. Take that look off your face, Michael Kelly. Yes, they're clearly not as lush and beautiful as yours, but no, they're still doing their thing. take one out there, compare the two. <laughs> oh, my God. He's relishing this. You've no not, idea. Not that it's a competition, but... Yeah. Okay, <laughs> like these are these ones are pretty small. So I suggest that we use these ones first in yeah. in whatever it is that we're gonna do. In a micro salad. In a micro salad. For little people. Okay. Who better than Jack Kerwin from Sprout and Co. to make the most of our harvest? He's putting together a tasty trio of beautiful beets in the Grow Cook Eat Cafe. Today I'm going to cook it three different ways with some lovely Irish crispy mackerel. So first up today I've got the tzatziki. It's a beetroot tzatziki with some horseradish which goes really nicely with mackerel. So I've got beetroot here that I've cooked earlier. I've just basically roasted it through so it's nice and soft. Into the blender. Lovely Irish yogurt. Uh, you don't want to put too much in because the, the more you put in, the sort of less beetrooty purple colour you have. One garlic clove, just a load of flavour off that. Some lemon juice, and don't put too much in initially because you can always add it a bit later. Maple syrup, just gives it a little extra sweetness as well. Next up then, we've got some uh, Irish horseradish, I'm just going to peel first. Fresh horseradish is really, really strong, so you want to be careful not to put too much of it in. Okay, so just grating a bit in. And then a little bit of salt and pepper. You can also add this later. Finally put the lid on. Okay, that looks great. The consistency is perfect and uh, the color is absolutely amazing. Okay, next part is the baby beetroots, which are basically a younger version of beetroot that are really sweet. So I'm gonna saute these in some oil and I'm gonna serve them with the mackerel later on. It's really simple, it just gets a little bit of extra flavor to them. I'm just going to slice them in half, and as you can see, they've got a great colour. They look great on the plate. And then I've also got a purple baby beetroot here that looks great too. Add some oil. 
I should mention as well that these have been parboiled earlier on today as well, so about two or three minutes on the pan just to get the heat through them. Baby beetroot into the pan. Just a little bit of salt. I'm gonna leave these now and get the macro ready. You don't really need about, like, as I said, two or three minutes before they're kind of cooked. Next up, I'm going to season the uh, mackerel here on the skin side before putting it onto the nicely hot pan. Let's check on my baby beets. These look fantastic. Just gonna set them aside. Onto the mackerel. Pan is nice and hot. Important you hear the sizzle. The whole idea here is that we're frying off the uh, skin side of the mackerel. I'm gonna flip it just at the end, cook on the flesh side just to finish it through. Okay, so the third way that we've cooked the beetroot today is by pickling it. This is a brilliant way of preserving beetroot if you've got a load left in the fridge or if you're growing it in your garden, don't know what to do with it. So if you put pickle this, it'll last for weeks and it's got a great flavor from it. Now the mackerel here is cooking through quite quickly. Should only take about two minutes to cook in total. As you can see, it's nice and crispy. Exactly as you want it. Now it only needs another sort of 20, 30 seconds like this. Nice and golden. Okay, so that's everything. Now I'm gonna plate up. We got our tzatziki here. Okay, so the pickled beetroot is gonna sit on top. It's gonna be an extra sort of sweet flavor to it. The baby beetroots is where we're just gonna sit them around the plate. And then finally, just to finish, we're gonna get some herb oil. Bit of pea shoot for a bit more green color. So there you have it, beetroot cooked three ways. One of Ireland's greatest vegetables in my opinion. This dish is absolutely delicious. This looks and smells delicious. absolutely delicious. So, Take a fork. this is from Mr. Jack Kirwan. And it looks what amazing. So I love the way that this is just like, no nonsense, serve it up, pan fried, absolutely amazing. Yeah. And that size as well, because we often let the beetroots get too big, not much taste in them, so just baby beets like that are absolutely These delicious. These were uh, definitely my container beetroots. They look fantastic. So three ways, isn't it? Pickled in little cubes under here, which looks great. Oh, it's really good. Brilliant way of preserving it as well, mm. making it last for um, a couple of months. I want to get a little bit of the fish. And we've also got some pea shoots on top here, which look great, making a bit of a mess there. <laughs> Should it's we get great a bib? stuff. Yeah, cool. Yummy. Yeah, well done, Jack Kerwin. Three ways of doing beetroot. Who knew? Delicious. For more information about growing beetroot and lots, lots more, head over to growcookie.ie and we'll see you next time when we celebrate another amazing vegetable. Sponsored by Stop Food Waste.ie and Bort Beer.